Hi all, welcome to another video of the subject power system analysis based on the KTU syllabus and we are on module 4 and uh, uh, today we are going to deal with the modeling of speed governing system. So this is the turbine speed governing system we have already learned in the previous videos. Uh, in that the uh, fly ball speed governing is a uh, very really important uh, uh, part here that is as the speed increases the fly balls move outwards in effect the point b move downwards when the point b move downwards the point d will also move downwards so uh, as an effect the lower pilot valve will open and uh, high pressure oil will flows through this path to the main piston and the piston move upwards and uh, it will reduce the steam flow okay so uh, like that <coughs> the speed governing system will work and uh, uh, we are going to model the speed governing system uh, today. So for that uh, we are assuming and the system is initially that is uh, the system is initially operating under steady state condition that is the linkage mechanism here the linkage mechanism is stationary and the pilot valve is closed steam valve is opened here steam valve is opened by a definite magnitude so turbine is running at a constant speed with a turbine power output balancing the general load so in that condition some uh, operating conditions uh, are we are taking some operating conditions as the f0 as the system frequency that is mainly dependent on speed then p0 is the generator output which is equal to turbine output neglecting the general loss and y e0 is the steam valve setting okay here okay steam valve set e y e okay and uh, uh, we shall obtain a linear incremental model around these operating conditions such like this so let the point a on the linkage mechanism be moved downward by a small amount delta y a okay that is we are assuming that this point okay is moved downward is moved downward by a small amount delta y a delta y a is the uh, moment that is the distance covered by that moment okay uh, we are assuming a moment of delta y a so it is a command which causes the turbine power output to change and can therefore be written as okay where well, that that is when this point a moves in effect the corresponding the valve uh, uh, will change here the opening of the valve will change here okay so uh, actually we can say that it is a command Okay, it is a command which causes the turbine power output to change and uh, this can be written as delta y a is equal to kc into delta pc it is a the uh, turbine power output okay it's a function of this delta y a and this delta pc is the commanded increasing power okay when there is a change in delta y a uh, this much change will be there in the corresponding uh, output power okay this is a constant kc and the command signal that is delta pc okay delta pc means if you are changing that uh, delta pc means uh, from the figure itself you can see here okay uh, so here uh, this is the point e okay so for there is a change in delta y e means delta y e okay delta y e means there is a change in the output power okay a change in delta y e means the valve is opening steel valve is the position of the steam valve is changing here okay thereby we are controlling the steam input to the turbine okay so this delta y e will determine the uh, change in delta uh, pc here okay so the change in delta y will happen if there is a change in a in the point a delta y a okay so the command signal delta pc sets into motion a sequence of events that is the pilot valve moves upwards okay that is the pilot valve move up upwards high pressure oil flows onto the top of the main piston moving it downwards that is the reverse option uh, 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 action that we have discussed earlier okay that is the here the pilot valve can see uh, from this figure okay the pilot wall move upwards okay the pilot wall move upwards means the point D okay the 
point D is moving upwards so the high pressure oil will come to the piston through this path when this valve move upwards okay so high pressure oil comes to the piston and the piston move downwards okay move downwards the steam valve opens okay steam valve opening consequently increases the turbine generator speed increases actually that is the uh, frequency uh, is increasing so uh, for for that condition we can model that event okay mathematically that is two factors there are two factors contribute to the movement of that c the point is c here okay that is in effect for changing the steam valve this is a linkage mechanism okay so there will be a corresponding change in all that point so if you are considering a change in the point c okay two factors will contribute to the movement of c they are delta y a okay delta y a con delta y a means the change in uh, position a okay delta y a contributes uh, an amount of l2 by l1 into delta y a that is the uh, length of these leverages okay the linkage here that is this is l1 this is l2 and this is l3 and this is l4 so l2 by l1 into delta y a so l2 by l1 we are taking as a constant of k1 so uh, the delta y a contributes a change in that is minus k1 into delta y a okay minus k1 into uh, delta y a that is uh, a minus sign indicates if there is if the point a move downwards the corresponding change in c will be upwards okay this is rigidly connected so when the point a move downwards c will move upwards and when a will move upwards c will move downwards like that okay so uh, a negative sign will be there minus k into delta y a okay that is upward movement so uh, delta y a means uh, we know that equation for delta y a is kc into delta pc so we are substituting that here instead of this delta y a we are substituting kc into delta pc so we will get minus k1 into kc into delta pc okay this is a uh, one fact factor and second one is increase in frequency delta of causes the fly bolts to move outwards that is when the speed increases these fly bolts move outwards in effect the point b point b will move downwards proportional to an amount of k2 dash into delta that is uh, something related to the frequency as the frequency increases the point b move downwards okay it is represented like this k2 dash into delta f the consequent movement in c okay that is when this move down uh, when the point b move downwards the corresponding movement in c will b in downward direction that is when point b move downward c will also move downward okay constant movement of c with a remaining fixed at delta y a that is we have uh, selected a change in delta y a earlier in the first case okay so we are keeping that change fixed here okay along with that change the point b move downwards so in effect the point c move downwards okay so that can be represented uh, by a fraction of the length that is k2 uh, dash into delta with the corresponding uh, term so uh, uh, the factor is l1 plus l2 by l1 okay by a factor of l1 plus l2 by l1 into k2 dash into delta f it will move the point c will move downwards okay and uh, here l1 plus l2 by l1 into k2 dash can be represented by k2 so the downward direction downward movement will be k2 into delta f okay so the upward movement will be this k1 minus k1 kc delta pc okay so for the corresponding movement in point c can be written as okay the net movement of c is therefore written as delta yc is equal to the sum of these two values this one and uh, this one okay so minus k1 kc delta pc plus k2 delta f okay so the, the, that is corresponding to point c and the movement of d point d delta y d okay that is the d okay the point movement of point d we are taking it as delta y d okay is the amount by which the pilot valve opens okay that the point is connected to the pilot valve okay so uh, the movement of point d is the amount by which the pilot valve opens so it is contributed by 
this delta y c and delta y e okay delta y c and delta y e so for there is a change in delta y c there will be a change in delta y d and also for there is a change in delta y e there will be a change in delta y d okay so uh, <coughs> that can be written as okay the change in delta y d can be written as like this delta y d will be equal to a uh, small fraction of delta y c will be there so it can be uh, written as a fraction of this delta y c can be written as this l4 by l3 plus l4 okay l4 by l3 plus l4 delta y c plus l3 by here the fraction of delta y e will be l3 by l3 plus l4 okay l3 by l3 plus l4 to delta y e okay this much uh, amount of change will be there for uh, delta y d okay here we are considering the fraction because uh, the both both movements we are considering delta y c and delta y e uh, we are considering at the same time okay that's why so here l4 by l3 plus l4 can be written as k3 and l3 by l3 plus l4 can be written as k4 okay so delta y d will be equal to k3 delta y c plus k4 delta y e okay so the movement uh, the moment delta y d okay y d depending upon its sign opens one of the ports of the pilot valve admitting high pressure oil into the cylinder okay thereby moving the main piston and opening the steam valve by delta y e so certain uh, justifiable uh, simplifications okay simplifying assumptions can be uh, there that is we are the two points okay two assumptions we are yeah, made here that is the first point is initial reaction forces of main piston okay the, the reaction force of main piston inertial forces okay and the steam valve are negligible compared to forces exerted on the piston by high pressure oil okay this high pressure oil will expect exert a force on the piston so uh, why we are counting that pressure uh, we are neglecting the uh, inertial pressures okay then second point because of the first one okay about the rate of oil admitted to the cylinder is proportional to the port opening okay port opening delta y d that we know okay that is the uh, rate of oil okay from here the oil is admitting to the piston so the rate of oil admitting to the cylinder is proportional to the port opening port opening means delta y d okay delta y d okay so the volume of oil admitted to the cylinder is thus proportional to the time integral of delta y d we can say that the volume oil volume of oil admitted to this cylinder okay will be uh, the time integral okay is proportional to the time integral of this delta y d the moment delta y e delta y e is obtained by dividing the oil volume okay dividing the oil volume by the area of cross section of the piston okay so thus delta y e can be written as okay the delta y e can be written as k5 into integral 0 to k minus delta y d dt okay minus delta y d dt okay so integral of the uh, uh, change in uh, delta y d we will obtain a change in delta y e mainly because if there is a change in delta y d okay if the point d move downwards uh, actually what happens the high pressure oil will come to the piston like this and uh, through this path and uh, uh, the main piston will move upward okay okay that is for a downward movement in d there will be an upward movement in this piston that is there will be an up and upward movement in point e that is uh, if delta y d is negative here that is if delta that is the point d is moving downward the delta y e will be upward okay that is the sign minus here okay so it can be verified from the schematic diagram that a, a positive movement delta y d causes negative movement of delta y that we have already discussed okay and uh, we are taking the Laplace transform now of the equations 8.2, 8.3 and 8.4. So, the 8.2 will be, okay, this is the, sorry, 8.2 will be this delta yc. 
So delta Y C of us will be equal to minus K1 K2 delta P C of us plus K2 into delta F of us. And uh, when we are taking the Laplace transform of this 8.3 delta Y D of us is equal to K3 into delta Y C of us plus K4 into delta Y E of us. And uh, 8.4 equation 8.4 is the integral equation. This is okay. So delta Y E of us is equal to minus we are taking the minus sign okay minus k5 into uh, yd okay integral sign uh, integral uh, symbol uh, if you are taking the Laplace now it will become 1 by s so yd of s by s okay yd of s by s so that is written here and uh, in the equation of delta ye if you are substituting the delta yd from 8.6 we are substituting these values in here and uh, instead of this delta yc we are substituting the 8.5 equation okay and by arranging the points and by arranging the uh, we obtain the equation delta y e of us like this okay by uh, uh, arranging the times and all we will get the point here and if you are dividing the uh, denominator and numerator by k1 k3 and kc k1 k3 and kc uh, we will obtain a form like this okay that is here uh, the 1 by r means if you are dividing k1 k3 kc okay k1 k3 kc uh, uh, the in the numerator okay the first time will become delta pc of us okay delta pc of us and the second one okay second one here that is i will show you here that is the time minus k2 k3 delta f of us divided by k1 k2 sorry k1 k3 kc so k3 k3 cancelled so we will get k2 by k1 kc okay so we are representing that using a 1 by r so the r means k1 kc by k2 that is k1 kc by k2 okay likewise uh, we are having all other terms all our substitution that is the entire equation can be written as delta pc of us minus 1 by r delta f of us into ksg by 1 plus TSTS where KSG is equal to K1 K3 KC by K4 that is the gain of speed governor and TSG is equal to 1 by K4 K5 that is time constant of speed governor okay so this equation the equation 8.8 .8 is can be represented in the form of a block diagram like this okay that is delta ye of us this is delta ye of us it is equal to delta PC of us so delta PC of us minus delta F of us into 1 by R so delta of us comes here delta of us into 1 by r okay minus sign will be there into ksg by 1 plus tsg into us that is this term into ksg by 1 plus tsg into us okay so this is the block diagram representation mathematical representation okay of the equation 8.8 .8 block representation so uh, this is the uh, model of the speed governing system i hope all of you understand uh, this well uh, and thank you